This is episode 46 of Standing Out. Standing Out is a remarkable interview style podcast with the intention to highlight women and men making outstanding contributions in their field. This podcast is generously sponsored by Think Global. Think Global is a business advisory firm working with women entrepreneurs around the globe to scale their businesses to the next level. This, business, this podcast is also generously sponsored by Smash Fund. Smash Fund is for the dreamer who dares to dream, the entrepreneur who eats obstacles for lunch, and a place where passions, people, and life collide. You can find your special invitation code in the description of this podcast. Today, I'd like to welcome Julia Westfall. Over the past 20 years, Julia has worked with many small businesses as a human resource and finance director. In addition to providing standard bookkeeping, cash flow, payroll, tax planning, financial statement preparation, audit management, and overall business planning services. She streamlined their financial processes and procedures to reduce the cost of these services to her clients. From a human resources perspective, she has also helped them to develop employee handbooks, manage their benefits and compensation packages, establish 401k plans, FSAs, and other employee benefits options. Julia has also also has experience helping build organizations from the ground up. An early venture was running the first PC retail store in the country for Wang Laboratories, an innovative technology Fortune 500 company. She later became a co-founder of a DC public charter school where she helped build a charter school from the application process to its opening and continue on as a director of finance for four more years. Julia, thank you for being here and welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to, to be joining you this morning. You have something so interesting um, going on. As I read everything that you've done previously, it's so much in the wheelhouse of all of the things that I often joke that I'm totally incapable of. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would love to know um, how you got your start in that space. And then we, we definitely want to move into what you are currently doing, which we've kind of held back for a moment so we can talk more in depth about that. Well, after um, a couple of years after I got out of college, I um, had moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and um, you know I majored in German in college, and so I had thought about going international business, but I ended up not going that route. And um, my cousin's husband worked for IBM, and mm -hmm. so um, I thought, well, I think I can do what he's doing. So uh, I ended up working for IBM for three years down in um, Macon, Georgia. Uh, and then I moved um, from there ultimately to Atlanta to work for Wang Laboratories, which mm -hmm. I don't know how many people are even familiar with that. Uh, and I'm company. not. No. Yeah. yeah, they actually started the first word processing system. So no. there you go. I mean, this is a long time ago, um, but uh, there used to be like the Wang Room where okay. you had highly technically trained people that were the only people that were able to actually do word processing on the Wang computer. It was really, wow. really, really interesting back then. So, um, so I worked for Wang in Atlanta for a while, um, actually worked with John Chambers who ended up just re recently retiring from Cisco. Okay. So he was, he was working, uh, back before, um, in those days. And then, um, and then I moved to Washington DC to open the first, uh, PC retail um, store for any major manufacturer. This is when PCs first came out. Um, it was really, I was excited about doing it and I really look at it as my first entrepreneurial venture. Mm, yes. Because, um, even though it was under the umbrella of a Fortune 500 company, we still had to figure out, you know, inventory and sales force and we had a, we had a location um, in downtown DC. So, um, that was really kind of exciting and that was really, I, you know, I love doing that. I love doing something that was different than what everybody else was doing. Um, and at this time selling PCs in a retail location, I mean, you couldn't buy them online, right? No, they, and actually yeah. they were just out. So okay. they were, they were still floppy disk based and uh, they were these huge, huge machines. So it was very different, but I kind of, when I think back that I actually got my career start in technology uh, and it was so so different back then but um, and to see where technology has come today yeah. it's really it's really a big difference but um, so that's what I really enjoyed I enjoyed that and I did that for three or four years and then I moved into managing a, um, a sales 
account, you know, um, a large sales account uh, branch for um, uh, for Wang. And then I did uh, some marketing management. And then I got laid off, like everybody, when the first mm-hmm. tech bubble crashed. And that's actually when I started working for a lot of small businesses, helping them with their uh, bookkeeping and uh, and finances, because I had been very well trained by IBM and Wang Laboratories on, you know, because I was selling those types of systems to companies. So you really had to understand uh, business. So, um, and I did that for a lot of years because it provided me a lot of flexibility mm-hmm. uh, to, you know, spend time with my kids. And I got to experience a lot of different kinds of businesses, which I think um, was really helpful. And I, yeah. I had some skills that I, you know, that I kind of had taken for granted, but I, when I was started working with small businesses, I realized that they didn't necessarily know how to create a job description and didn't know how to evaluate employees and things like that. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I really enjoyed helping them do that um, type of thing. So how did, so, I and mean, that's such an interesting background. How did that lead you into what you're doing today? Well, I um, was working for a marketing communications company um, as a director of finance and um, HR, and I saw a an article on the New York Times mm-hmm. online about Felina Hansen, who is a Hera Hub founder out in San Diego, um, and she had started um, these uh, female-focused co-working locations and was looking to expand them across the country. And I thought, wow, that could be something really, really interesting because. I had enjoyed working with small businesses. I felt like I had a lot of knowledge. And the other thing that really interested me was just, uh, you know, it it, it sounds, I don't want to say it sounds hokey because there are tons of people and made a big difference uh, when I was doing it. But I loved being the room parent. I loved, you know, my kids are in school and I loved uh, that sort of, um, of helping connect people, yeah. helping people achieve goals, or even if it, you know, was just to have a great something for the class or the school. Um, and so uh, when my daughters went off to college, I found that, uh, that I wanted more for myself um, mm-hmm. and wanted to try something different and new. And so when I ran across Hera Hub, I thought, wow, this would be a really great way for me um, to share what I've learned. Yeah. Um, meet a lot of amazing women doing really great things um, and have my next career, you know? So it was either, you know, prepare for retirement or do something, do something new and different. So uh, that's what I decided to do. And I had a lot of support from my husband and my daughters. And so it's been, it's really been just a great experience. So, um, so that's kind the- of the hub. Yeah. So for those listeners who don't, who are unfamiliar with the Hera Hub, give us the brief rundown of um, what sets this company apart from, from some other competitors in the space. Well, we are a female focused co-working space. So uh, really what we like to do, and we're not exclusively women, mm-hmm. uh, but we lo- wanted to create an environment where women entrepreneurs and business owners uh, would feel welcome would come and con- and collaborate with like-minded women who were might have part-time um, professions, but um, are very serious about the work that they're doing, um, and provide them with a co-working space, a place to get out of the house because it can be really isolating to be working from home, and um, and really that's what we're focused on is really creating this wonderful community of women in addition to having a professional work and meeting space for them to, to have client meetings, do their seminars, actually come and work uh, together. And, um, uh, and Felina Hansen created it with what I think was, was great was this kind of a spa inspired feeling where there it's, so it's a pretty relaxing place when you come in with the colors and the water treatments and all of that, which, um, is I think when people can come in and they can relax, it helps them focus. Yeah. You know, they don't have a lot of the, you know, busyness around them and it's really a very productive place. Mm-hmm. So. I can see that. I do know that busyness feeling of sometimes it does create a nice vibe and like get you yeah. going, but it's also distracting. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Someone like me who like, you, you just kind of have to put your head down and focus and get things done and you know, anyway, so that's really interesting. What would you say, um, 
what are what are some of the ways that you're keeping up on the trends and news and things um, to kind of Im improve the brand and to grow the brand? Well, I just am really trying to build strategic partnerships here in okay. in DC uh, with um, organizations like Springwood Enterprises, which is mm -hmm. a great organization. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they've been helping uh, women-owned um, tech companies. Uh, grow their businesses to okay. for venture funding um, and actually they've been doing it for over 15 years and helped oh wow women, women founders tech founders raise over six billion dollars wow so, um, uh, so and that's really great so I, I really try to be involved in the community I try mm -hmm. to uh, we recently had we're fortunate enough to have um, a meeting with a lot of the other co-working spaces um, in DC to kind of get to know each other understand uh, you know, our target customer, our target client, uh, what kind of programs we're all offering. Uh, so I really work hard to, to be out there in wow. the, in the entrepreneur community here um, in DC, which is really growing. I mean, DC government has really put a big focus on, you know, the tech component, but also um, other types of businesses as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I really spend a lot of time doing that. And, um, and other, interestingly enough, one of my members uh, found me this time last year. Uh, she has an office now, but she was doing research uh, for CBRE, which is a big real estate company, okay. um, on co-working and the, the nature of co-working and how it's changing work and how people are utilizing utilizing their workspaces differently. So I keep up with some of the trends through some of the research that she's done actually for some of her clients, which is interesting. Oh, awesome. It's going to be interesting to see how this whole, um, how the co-working and shared office and workspace evolves because it's still very dynamic. And I think mm -hmm. um, it's continuing to evolve um, with people, you know, like we work as we live. I mean, mm -hmm. there's another place that's opened up here where, yeah you know, in DC where they have, you know, they might have somebody with an office space right next to somebody who's living in a condo. So it's just combining, trying to figure out the best way to combine everything. It was so funny. I had a meeting um, in Denver with exactly what you're describing, a, a person who works in a co-working space and then his condo is just on the other side of the parking lot. And we were just joking. Yeah. How often do you leave? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, not very often the coffee shops right there and then I go work out here I'm just like oh my gosh it's time things have changed over yeah time. but it, it'll be interesting to see how yeah. uh, because I think that with with co-working in general there's this been this um, uh, dynamic of you know everybody feels like it's great to work from home and then you're working from home and you realize how isolating it can be yeah whether you're you whether you work for a company or you have your own business, it really doesn't matter. And so now there's a swing for people to come back into communities. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it's interesting. A lot of my members really are not interested in obviously in combining the work yeah. and living um, because they really want to keep the two separate. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of the reasons why they come here is they they really want their their house to be. You know, and just a restful place, and come here to work. work. So, um, it'll be interesting to see where it all is in five years. I'm really yeah. fascinated by that. No, it's really interesting. Let's talk about that strategic partnership piece for a second, because you have a lot of really awesome things going. And as you're mentioning who you're partnering with, I'm easily connecting the dots. Like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, I would love for you to share with um, everyone sort of the lens that you're looking at these partnerships with. So what do you think makes a successful partner? Like what lens are you looking at it to determine, oh, that might be a successful partnership or that one may not be? Well, really I look at it as, uh, as um, who can bring value to my membership and has things that, that my members can use um, and um, from an educational standpoint, from a networking standpoint, um, and that also, um, who, who can really benefit from what we're doing here at Hera Hub? You know, um, I really, be I believe that partnerships have to be, um, you know, really a true exchange of help and mm -hmm. collaboration. Yeah. And one thing I really like about Springboard Enterprises is we do, um, they have a great program called Dolphin Tank, which is oh. kind of like a, 
it's a pitch practice session. Like um, Shark Tank? Yeah, it's like okay. a Shark Tank, but what they do is it's really- Shark Tank sounds way friendlier. <laughs> it's much, much friendlier. It is much, much friendlier in a practice session. Yeah, it's practice session, so you have an expert panel that gives you feedback on your business idea, and um, we're actually having one here, hosting one here on November 3rd. With oh. them, it'll be our second one. Um, so, uh, you know, and it's free for you to pitch, and it's free for people to attend. Very and cool. it's really an amazing um, uh, that people that actually attend these things, you might have the uh, head of the Dingman Center, which is the Entrepreneurship Center at University of Maryland came, mm -hmm. the one we did last fall, and you have somebody who's presenting their business idea to get feedback, and some from, somebody goes from the audience, well, I have three people you need to meet. Wow. And it's just, it's so, it's, yeah, it's just this great connection. And, um, so it's just, and they support women owned businesses and, uh, and so we just do a lot of collaboration. There's another great, um, organization called the Veneta project that mm -hmm. I don't know if they have a chapter in your area, but they, they do. I actually, um, I know them. Yeah. Yeah. They're, a, they're a really great group. Mm -hmm. I've gone to their events. Um, you know, and, um, uh, and you know, although that they're they're tech focused, mm -hmm. um, and we are not focused on technology, even though we have some members that are yeah. are tech businesses, um, it's re just really great to to help women communicate, collaborate, and network, and just promote women in business in general. Right. So that's really what I'm looking for is are those communities and organizations that are really supporting women. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's kind of really what I look for in a strategic partner is somebody yeah. who we can have a long-term relationship with too. Mm -hmm. so. I think that's important too, is that long-term piece because so much time and energy goes into building the partnership and you want it to be beneficial for both. And, and oftentimes it just takes time to make that happen. Yeah. So that's really great. What's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given? Mm, I think, well, is from a long, long time ago, one of my customers when I was with IBM mm -hmm. said, because uh, I asked him, what what do you attribute your success to? Because he's a very successful business. And I usually like to ask people that that are successful when you get to a certain point. They say, right. well, you know, what's your secret sauce? Right. And I still think of it today is I always do, when I come into work, I always do what I don't want to do first. Oh. Tough customer call to make, mm -hmm. I do that first because then it frees me up to do the rest of the things that I really enjoy doing the rest of the day. And I'm not, you know, dreading. <laughs> and I think that that's true in life, you know, really addressing what's yeah. difficult, um, you know, with your best time of energy and yeah. that sort of thing. I, I, and I think that applies whether it's in a career, I think it just applies in life. It's just, you know, just pushing through that and um, and when you get to the other side of that then you've got a lot of freedom of how mm -hmm. you spend your time and be creative because I know it can be it can be really draining to be thinking about that tough customer call <laughs> absolutely yeah. it can so. weigh on you I've you know I've heard similar but it was um, it was an analogy about eating frog legs so you want to eat your frog legs first so that you can yeah. enjoy your dessert and the you know whatever else right. what right. Right. greatness is on your plate the rest of the day yeah. and I think just from personal experience I I think that's perfect get get the tough thing done and then you're freed up. And what I notice when, when people let the tough thing carry on, or sometimes the tough thing has to carry on because the meeting about it isn't for another two days or yeah, you know, yeah. then that's, Oh, that's one of those ones that drives me crazy when, when you can't get that tough thing out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you just, just have, have to kind of find a way to move past it, all it go for a couple days. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. Well, as we wrap up, the last question I have for you is what, as an industry expert, what is one thing that's currently on your radar that you think we'll all be talking about in another year or two years from now? Hmm. I, you know, I think that, um, I really, th I think it's this evolving state of work mm -hmm. and what, what that really means for, um, you know, when you really think about it, 
the uh, and there's a lot of you know there's been a lot of facts and figures out there that you can attribute to but in general mm -hmm. what, what they say mostly is that by 2020 60 percent of the knowledge workforce knowledge-based professional workforce will be working independently wow 60 percent will either have their own business or be a freelancer and you see that happening a lot even now in law firms and things that you think of as very traditional yeah, so they might have lawyers spread out around the world um, working remotely and, you know, might just bring them in on contract or, you know, and, yeah. and you find it with a lot of industries that you used to think would be the bastion of traditional right. you know, working and that's breaking through. So I think it's really going to be interesting to see how things kind of level out and where um, and how that really how business really looks from a work, a work standpoint. There was a, also a woman I met in, um, through Global Entrepreneurship a Day last year who mm -hmm. was working in Germany, and she wrote a book last year about the nature of work. And okay. um, she actually sent me a copy, but it was Auf Deutsch, which was, means it was in German, and I was like, oh, oh my German. <laughs> 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 read it but it was really about the changing nature of work and not just because of entrepreneurs and things like that but even companies and how they are putting some whole departments outside of their traditional office space to allow them to be creative and innovative mm -hmm. and finding um that innovation and and i think that the focus on innovation is really wow. really exciting um and um, and I think as as more millennials come into the workforce and uh, and that sort of thing, I think that the that the way that that they're accustomed to working and what they really want out of their lives and careers um, is really going to reframe things a little bit. Right. You know? And I think and I think in a good way. I think we always have to take it, you know, work the 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 best of both worlds in terms of you know what really makes the most sense now with technology and everything. I think you're right on with that. I know um, one of our corporate clients, they, we work with one department within a um, very large company, but they all actually work virtually. And I went up to meet them um, a few months ago at, their, at one of their offices and they logged in with their key card. They're like, oh, I hope this works. I haven't logged in in months, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the other thing on that, I, you know, what you were saying about 60% of us, you know, working more as a freelance or contract work in the marketing industry, which is what my space is, that number has always been high. And I believe it's been around 30%, but mm -hmm. I recently started seeing some numbers creep up around 50% of marketing professionals are going mm -hmm. to be freelance or contract in the next few years. And I think that is just fascinating. Um, and I, I do attribute a lot of it to um, technology and being able to work virtually and mm -hmm. how we are now. And right. then also, um, that innovation piece, there, there's a huge component there and there's a lot of like perfect storm elements kind of coming together that I think are, is really moving that along. Yeah, well, and I, I'm sure you've probably heard it because I've heard it in a couple of speeches, but it's it's like the the evolution, you know, like my my father's generation, mm -hmm. he, he had basically two jobs in his whole life and his whole career. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I will have had maybe five or six in my career but my daughters who are just will be turning 23 in January might be doing six things at one time. Isn't that incredible? And, and which, is, which is, I think it's true. I think that that's really the way that um, it's going. And so I'm fascinated by um, the prospect of how my daughters, um, what their career is going to look like. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I can speak, my stepdad, he has actually, he's a Gen Xer. He uh -huh. has had um, one job his entire life and yeah. he's about to retire from it in maybe three years or so. Um, and when he looks at, he, he came to visit my, mm -hmm. our family um, a, a, about a year ago or so. And he's just like, I don't know what you guys do for a living, but can, you know, you seem to be doing well, so you're doing something. <laughs> I was like, whatever you do just terrifies me. <laughs> yeah. 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 He looks at us, at us as 
oh, it's so risky to own your own business. It's so risky to take on new projects and try new things. But then our perspective, and we're, my husband and I are both um, what we call grandma millennials, like we're on that last little yeah. year of it. Um, but we look at it as, well, no, we're diversified. We have many things going on. It's unlikely that many things would end at the same time. Right, um, right. But so you think it looks risky. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. He thinks it looks so risky, and then we think what he does looks so risky. So it's yeah, general yeah. perspective. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, so I think that that's, I think that's very yeah. true. But, but thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for being here, Julia. I appreciate it.